Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykans, superintendent of the Needham Schools, sitting here today in Needham High School's new Da Vinci's Workshop, and I'm joined by several folks who are partnering with us as students and corporate partners and community members to bring science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, or STEAM alive in our classrooms and schools. So I want to welcome all of you today, uh, Alex Cohen and uh, Josh Callis, two juniors at Needham High School, Elise Morgan, our Science Center Director and Science Curriculum Specialist at the elementary level, Professor Katrin Lynch at Olin College, uh, Mr. Iora Berry from PTC Inc. located in Needham, and Michael Grice, Chairman of our School Committee. Thank you all for being here. I thought in this setting we'd have a conversation about STEAM, and uh, sometimes people are hearing STEM, STEAM, and what is, what's that all about? So Iora, what, 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 is, what is STEM or STEAM to you? Yeah, it's a question I play around with a lot in my work, and um, when I first actually started getting involved in STEM, uh, it was about four or five years ago, I, there's a re kind of a seminal report that came out from the engineering field uh, on the status of engineering education, and uh, in the beginning they talked about what is STEM, and they had a little snappy description that kind of caught my mind. It was big S, little t, translucent E, big M. And that was the description of like the state of STEM in the United States in the sense that science and math get a lot of attention in the classroom. Technologies had a little bit of history with the kind of shops and engineering classes. And then engineering in itself is just not really prevalent in the curriculum and stuff like that. It's kind of funny actually before it, they used to call it SMEC, but they're like, oh, I think we should probably change that. So they changed it to STEM. So that's kind of like one perspective, like what is what does it look like in the in the country from a practice level, and that's what the research talks about it. I also ask teachers what they think STEM is, and sometimes like when I do a workshop, like I ask teachers say, you know, describe in one word what is STEM, and the one that wins out often or like gets the most hits is integrated. So that's a big concept for teachers. That's something that they're looking for is integration. Um, and then there's STEM in industry, and so PTC is a product development company. We help manufacturers like Nike or Boeing or create products with software and so for us STEM is the product development process. It's about creating products using different experts and processes so you might be designing something as simple as a cup to an airplane but when you design those products you need expertise in all the different areas. You need science to think about doing experiments and calculating performance but you might need art too to do marketing and branding of the logo, business, etc. So for us STEM in the real world is product development, and those disciplines are kind of the um, points of expertise and enablement for that product development process. Wow. And what about it uh, in college and, and in Needham schools? How are we thinking about STEAM? So uh, it's interesting to hear your description of the translucent E. So we also talk at Olin about, uh, unfortunately, often the, the acronym STEM is pronounced with a silent E. So it's the same idea. And um, we like to orient, uh, the mission of Olin College is to create innovators who can use their technical expertise for, for the good of the world. And so we really talk about the integration of science, technology, and math with engineering as the, the pivot point that all these things are integrated around. But also this recent move to add in an A I, I can't decide what I think of it because engineering needs arts, humanities, and social sciences by default. So if we're going to throw in the A, we should throw in the H and the S also, and I'm an anthropologist, so I, I like the S, the social science. But really, we want to emphasize that engineering is the perfect liberal arts kind of field and degree and vocation, and that if you're being trained as the right kind of engineer starting in kindergarten and thinking, having the right mindset, then all of these fields will be integrated. I, I like how uh, uh, thinking about engineering is uh, uh, bringing in all these, these different disciplines. And certainly that's the case at Olin College and the work that you're doing with students. Elise, recently uh, we had a STEAM night at uh, Newman. So why the STEAM night and, and, and playing off of Iora and, and, and Professor Lynch? What, what does that mean to you, and, and what was that STEAM Night all about? So part of the reason why we did STEAM Night was to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Needham Science Center. And um, the reason why we focused around STEAM was because we have a new STEAM program in Needham this year in grades one through three. And I think not all teachers or parents are exactly sure what that really means. Um, so we really wanted to highlight what STEAM is and give 
uh, families exposure to it and really just engage kids in STEAM projects. And so when I think of STEAM, and Ayor mentioned this, that it's really integrated. It's about bringing science, technology, engineering, arts, and math together. It's a lot of um, what used to be the trend, which was project-based learning, but now we're, we're moving to, into calling it STEAM. Um, but the idea of getting kids doing hands-on activities that involve some type of uh, problem solving, the engineering design process, and um, but using science and math, but also focusing on the creativity and um, empowering kids to solve problems using creativity and letting them know that they can be engineers, they can be scientists, and they can solve the problems on their own. So at STEAM Night, we had kids solving problems like how do you create the best sounding kazoo? Um, and it's and um, seems like very simple technology, but it really engages kids in the engineering design process. You know, we also had them designing parachutes and designing, um, coming up with musical compositions on their own. So it's really integrating the different topics in a very innovative and creative way. I particularly like the uh, sandbox. That was that was pretty amazing, where you could shape the sand and, and change the topography, uh, and it would show where rivers and lakes would fall. That was, um, that was, that, that certainly got my, right. my attention. And so when we do STEAM, we talk to kids about creating technologies, which technology is just something that solves a problem or meets a need that is, uh, that you create with the engineering design process. So we had old, we had simple technologies like kazoos and uh, parachutes, and then we had more complicated more uh, technologically advanced technologies like the augmented reality sandbox, we had an R2-D2 robot, we had the robotics team from the high school there, so we had a mix of both types of technologies. And, and the other thing about the, the uh, STEAM night, almost a thousand people, students and adults came through in one evening, so it was a pretty fabulous uh, program. Yeah, I just want to follow up, you kind of, when you mentioned technology and its role in STEAM, Something that's been kind of caught my mind recently is we're kind of in a, a new phase of the role of the school. If you go back, I, mean, it used to be, I used to teach history, so I like to think about history a lot. And if you go back 100 years, a big revolution for education was the business model, right? So the idea of the Industrial Revolution and departmentalizing schools, and so that became the birth of having science departments and math departments and stuff like that. That was a big shift for education from the one schoolhouse to the kind of... Uh, segmented school. So that was a big shift. Then there was another big shift recently in the last 20 years, which was the information revolution. Like we're, we now have access to all this stuff on the web and kids can learn how to make a pizza or a robot or a 3D printer, right? And um, so now the role of the school is changing a little bit where the teacher needs to be a facilitator or a guide. I would argue that right now there's a new kind of revolution happening, which is the creativity revolution. So you talk about the AR technology, the 3D printing. All these things are enabling kids now to be creators, and so it comes back to that problem solving. So the, I think STEAM as a concept or project-based learning or creativity, it's really relevant right now, and one of the reasons why is that technology is affordable and easy to use, and that means kids can do it at a young age. And that's pretty exciting to be an educator in that field. So that's, I love my job and being part of that. It's so cool. Well, and here at Needham High School, I mean, that's in, in many ways what this space we're in is devoted to. Josh and Alex, um, I, I, uh, you're, you're two uh, young men who've kind of taken up that uh, sense of creativity and engineering. Both of you members of the engineering club here at Needham High School. Uh, you decided to, to put forth a grant through the Parent Teacher Council to uh, design and build a, th a 3D printer. How'd that come about? Well, so about two years ago at my house, I helped my dad build uh, the first 3D printer. And uh, we thought it'd be a good project to bring to the high school. So. I thought, you know, a bunch of kids working on a printer after school, a couple days a week, we could probably get it done in a reasonable amount of time. So you, you've created a 3D printer. Does, is it finished? Does it work? Yeah. We, Where'd you get the parts? Uh, how, how, did, how, how did all hmm. that come together? So it, uh, it's, it's done. I mean, the initial build phase is done. Um, we got the parts, some of them from uh, retailers. Uh, we printed some of them in my house. Um, some of them were brought home from China over business trips. Um, but you know, it's be, it was the last of the 3D printers to be uh, sourced. And nowadays, the past year, a lot of kits have come out. People like to build them with uh, all the parts, and uh, we actually went out and got got all our own. So you built it from scratch. Sort of. Yeah. Mo yeah we built it from scratch. So. And Alex, what were some of the challenges in building the 3D printer? Uh, for so you. 
so I didn't know a lot of the like how to build it and a lot of the terms and parts that go into it going into it but um, like Josh was able to teach everyone through the process about everything that goes into it and the different parts that can put it together so I learned a lot through that but I mean I guess one of the hardest parts were that we decided to source all the parts individually and pull them together uh, instead of buying the kit which was cool because it helped us save money and also uh, it's just more interesting to do it on your own like that rather than I bet you learned it. a lot more by yeah. uh, yes. sourcing it on your own. It's a good skill. How many were involved in, in the design, I the think, development, uh, So, well, to be clear, uh, the design is uh, free design on the internet. Uh, As Open Aura was saying, that's where you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so I think in total, I think maybe around eight kids were involved. Uh, different sports seasons caused some people to be there at some times, not others, but I think maybe around eight kids. Yeah, it, it was great that it was a pretty big commitment, but at the same time, we were really flexible in meeting times. Um, like we would change the days based on the week and change the times based on the week. So we got a lot more kids into it that way, especially kids who do sports so don't, don't have much time but still want to participate in it. So, and, and you worked with a couple of your teachers, at least Mr. Hirsch, who, who was a, a bit of a mentor and, and guide through this process. So we have teachers and students, we have administrators and corporate and, 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 and uh, professionals from our, our, our colleges, local college, Olin, uh, kind of pulling together. Michael, uh, one of the things that you have championed on the school committee is this, uh, the notion of really thinking about how STEM or STEAM can, can take root in our schools, but more broadly, uh, the business of collaborating to pull people together to make great things happen. Uh, cool. here, here, it's, it's happened. It's right here. That has nothing to do with receptivity or interest on behalf of, as you can see from the people involved in the schools, it has to do with the fact that we're being asked to do more and more in the same amount of time. And in fact, thanks to the support of the community, we were able to add to the elementary day in the last year, and that's why we have a one to three uh, steam rotation that's starting this year. So you, you, even if you wanted to have individually new classes and new areas, you would have to collaborate because there's only, you can only get it into the day by doing that. Um, it has taken us uh, quite a while, and we, we started with the engineering, uh, partly because uh, I very much wanted to see, not this just in the middle of the middle school, school, middle school right. seventh grade engineering, not just because I want to see more kids go into engineering, that's a great thing, but engineering to me is another discipline. If you think of all the disciplines we teach, whether it's math, whether it's the fine and performing arts, uh, it's technology or, or English and social studies, they all have different ways of thinking about things, whether it's the scientific method. And engineering is designed with constraints. If you think about it, it's what it is. So you're, you're giving, everyone should go through it because it gives you another way to solve problems. So we, wanna, we want all kids to have this experience. We don't wanna just create something for a few kids who are going in to be engineers. And that's why that integration is so phenomenally important to doing this uh, and the collaboration that's made it possible and we, you know, we very much wanna grow, grow that. I mean, I come to this from uh, a previous life when I did a lot of collaboration, public, private, government, K through 12, university. And that's what we've tried to do here because we have wonderful, we have some colleges right here in our community. We have corporations that are very interested in this, like PTC, and, and who are out in the community, out working with schools. We have our own science center. We have incredibly creative uh, teachers and kids. So that's, that's what we're doing. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to take us a while to really get to the point where we're doing it to the level we would love to do it. Olin has a special commitment to trying to uh, get unrepresented minorities and uh, women in engineering. And so Olin has a 50-50 population of uh, women and men students. And we have a lot of students who actually go out. I, I recently have been talking to students about the work they do in all sorts of public school systems, including Needham. And they are running workshops for kids in third grade and need them and doing all sorts of things and really trying to help people who might think, oh, engineering's not for me, see what engineering is. I'm even a person who, the whole time I was growing up, I thought it was incredibly boring and had nothing to do with people. Why would you want to be an engineer? I now realize that engineering is all about people. But we get these messages when we're really young that that there are some things that have, have value and some things that don't and some things that require certain skills and some that don't. And unfortunately, especially in terms of gender, girls get pushed out really early and not interested in, in these STEM fields, but especially engineering. So that kind of collaboration definitely we see is helping to 
And, and we owe some of that to Olin College and your vision because one of the most uh, uh, important courses kids take is a, is a design course, but it starts not with engineering principles, but with talking to people yeah. and saying, what is it you need? What, what work do you do and how could you make it better? And that immediately attracts kids who are thinking, well, you know, I don't want to do all this math and doing equations. They're, they're starting from the point of realizing, well, I like working with people and I like thinking about solving problems and helping them, but that's the way you start the engineering. You can't engineer something until you know what it is they do and what they need. And that's something that has been very powerful, obviously, for Olin, but something we want to take in. My favorite Olin example is the fourth graders from Hillside School who have yeah. gone to Olin every year yes. for the past 11 years, right? And so it's, it's a first semester course at Olin where all the Olin students have to, they're learning about mecha mechanical and electrical systems, and they have to make a toy and the, their grade is determined in part by the fourth graders who and, come and in. How, how good's the toy? Yeah. Right. Is it fun? Right. Yeah. Is it fun? You, you mentioned the engineering class. Um, Josh and Alex, did you take the engineering class at Pollard? Yeah, we did. Seven okay. Seven, I think it was just about beginning probably, that was, that was when, probably you were, when you were when you were there. Yeah. Okay, good. So we're trying to do some things in the schools to, to promote uh, this, this idea of solving problems, engineering. Um, which is a really neat concept. I think you're right. We're at a point where we can start to, maybe a tipping point, shift what people think about engineering. Um, Elise, we're, this year kicked off in grades one, two, and three a, a new STEAM curriculum. Can you briefly describe what are we trying to do and, and what have you seen so far? So what we're trying to do is really get kids to see themselves as scientists and engineers uh, from, from a very young age. A lot of people think engineering, that's, that's, a, that's a high school topic. It's really not appropriate for, um, for kids, but it's it's actually a very natural process for kids to go through. It's the kind of thing that they they do when they're little. They experiment with the sandbox. They build forts. They fix the fort. They redesign it. So it's something that's really quite innate to children. So we're really just tapping into that natural curiosity. And um, right now we have kids doing various projects. For example, in the engineering class, they are learning about um, a real student, a real child in. Uh, in Africa who designed his own windmill and then they take that story and they design their own windmills and they test them out and they um, learn about how you can create um, something to do work creating the power of wind. So it's a really exciting project that they're doing and very relevant to the real world. Um, so that's one of the projects they're doing. They're also working on integrating math and playwriting in one of the classes. They're doing coding in one of the classes. Um, so really exciting, new, innovative projects that we're trying this year, and then we're going to continue to kind of um, evaluate the program and make changes for the next following years. And I would like to see it continue up into grades yeah. four or five Absolutely. elementary levels. He hearing all this kind of makes me want to go back. I to was just <laughs> going to say, I was going to ask you, you know. Um, for, for me, all throughout like elementary school and middle school and even the high school a little bit, there's always been a big separation, I feel, between like the normal school day and then other STEM engineering things and I mean it seems like they're kind of being integrated into one so like you have to do that which is great because I never I didn't really get into it until the beginning of high school so I was kind of a late start but hearing all this makes me want to go back so I could get like an earlier start in that. Well you bring up a good point because I think schools have been guilty of for a long time as I already started to, to you know to outline of of putting learning in silos and, and, and in, in separate buckets and, and you know an engineering club or, or maybe a space like this, a robotics team, is all something we thought of, well that happens after the learning. That's something that's after hours, that's extra. Um, and, and certainly that's true in some cases and in many places there are things that you have to attend to during the school day and, and you need more time after the school day. But I think here at Needham High School in this conversation is all about what can we integrate into the school day because that's going to enrich and empower learning and, and excite learning, um, not just separating it from, from, you know, from the, you know, the math and, and, and literature and, and, and science. Uh, Katrin and Aora, tell, this business of silos, we, we have our responsibilities in the schools to provide a great teaching and learning environment. Um, and there are certain concepts and disciplines and curriculum we have, to, we have to get through because the state requires, the school committee wants us to, but we can't do it by ourselves. You have both been, Olin and, and PTC Inc. Have, have been huge partners. This lab 
um, is really uh, sponsored uh, by PTC um, in a big way and the Needham Education Foundation. Uh, what, what are some of those partnerships look like or what would you like them to look like as we move forward? What's happened at both of your uh, institutions? Uh, the integration concept's an important theme to focus on. Another one that I see as successful in these kind of integrated project-based learning environments is authentic projects. So curriculum that one is valuable in respect to state standards and things like that, but two has a contribution to the community. So a great example I think you know some people are familiar with is High Tech High over in California. I think some of the founders actually came out of Massachusetts and they moved out there and started a whole school which the intention was a design studio if you will for kids to learn about different disciplines and create products and one of their culminating events that I think really enables integration of disciplines is they have a showcase at the end of the semester. So where all the students showcase their work to their community members who might have been participants in the design of the product. So you mentioned Olin College, they speak with fourth graders. Why not have fourth graders speak to elderly populations or disabled veterans or whatever the product they're creating, uh, having that kind of user contribution and then culminating in a kind of a fair event. So an example might be and locally is Marlboro has a STEM science fair in the spring where kids do a semester long project and they present on that. Now that's challenging for a number of reasons in terms of curriculum and things like that. How do you do a semester long project? I get that. Um, but another way to jump at it, I've seen this in many schools, you have a thematic day, right? And that's not a new concept, but the theme of today is oceans. The theme of today is wind power. The theme of today is, dis is veterans. And then all the different disciplines explore that topic and then maybe there's some culminating event that day or the next day and so uh, to bring it back the idea of authentic authenticity in the curriculum um, naturally requires people to work together because you're making something for someone and they often have different needs and so you might be creating a, a wind turbine for I don't know for a school and you need to write some press releases on it so you need English or you need to make a logo for your marketing thing, or you need uh, it to work, so you gotta work with the science class. So there's ways to connect people and not only having it be project-based, but also having that authentic component, I think is something to reach for next. If you're not already doing it, I think that's a great stretch goal for any school. That also ties into an important goal that this kind of the civic education goal that the schools have, and that is that you can't accomplish, I mean, great science, great engineering isn't enough. Right? You mentioned press releases, but frankly, there's great technology that somehow people have to think about how do you communicate it to people? Yeah. And right. arts and humanities and music and social sciences and thinking about historical examples help. And when you watch kids working together, they learn to appreciate someone who just loves tinkering, learns to appreciate someone who's good with words because they can help them communicate. And that's an important part of what they do. And I've certainly seen that when you look at the, uh, the, the, the Olin showcases. What, what, are, what are some of those partnerships between Olin and the Needham schools that? that uh... there, there are so many, but one of my favorite is one that I was involved in. A few years ago, my colleague Rob Martello and I had the great privilege of working with um, so the NEF had sponsored a program to bring some kind of integrated class to the high school. And so Rob and I both teach integrated classes at Olin. I teach a class that's half anthropology, half design. He teaches a bunch of things, material science and history integrated, biology and history integrated, and environmental studies and history. So we came here, we talked to the teachers who were thinking of applying about what we do and how and how to think about integration. We're not saying it, here's the anthropology and here's the design, but they're really, you know, mixed together and it's challenging and exciting as a teacher and get, gets me revived when I start, I'm learning design because I'm teaching design now all of a sudden. So we talked to the teachers about that and then there was a competition and now we have this class that seems wonderful, the Greater Boston Project. Greater Boston Project. Right, and this does the kind of work that Aora was talking about. It's a class that integrates math, English, and history if I'm getting that right, it's yeah. for seniors, and they're doing real world, they, they're getting to know the community around here, doing real world projects, they're in teams, which we know that colleges and then later employers, this point that Michael was making about communication, they value people who can work on teams, right? You can learn the content of how to do that math problem at some point, but you need to know how to be a problem solver, how to work with people, how to know what you need to know and then seek it out, and I'm excited that the Greater Boston Project seems to really have 
picked up on those things. So the, the, other, the other area, I mean, there's so many other partnerships. One of the things that's very cool is when the Olin students come for a disability awareness program. Now, this is an example of getting, you know, civic, it, it has so many wonderful components to it. Someone should come and research and study and replicate it all over. We have a disabilities awareness program in our elementary schools, and it was in a silo with just the Needham Commission on Disabilities, with some, some neighbors in our community who are blind or who are deaf who are, or have other disabilities, and they would come in and talk to the students. Now, we have Olin students come in, along with the uh, disabled Needham citizens. The Needham residents explain their disability, the children listen, and then they partner with the Olin students to design something that the, the adult may need. They're not engineers, it's not something they're going to take home and use, but the idea is to sit down and listen to someone, an adult who has a disability, and then working in teams problem solve with the Olin students leading them to create something that will make their life more functional or easier or, or more reasonable. So it's just powerful all the way around. You're getting to meet neighbors, uh, you're learning all kinds of lessons, and it's, it's just powerful learning that, that Olin uh, and, and PTC have brought to us. You, you have it in, in December and May, mm -hmm. the Expo. Right. So what's the Expo at Oland, and, and can Needham High School students come to the Expo? Yes, please, they should. So we have, every, at the end of both semesters, so in December and in May, all Oland students present their work to the community. And we invite people from Needham and from companies and other communities, uh, um, not just Needham, and we have hundreds of people who come. And students give uh, either poster presentations or, or uh, formal stand-up presentations um, about work that they've done that, that semester. And we have hundreds of high school students who come in, and they, they love it. They come for a field trip, and they, and they can have lunch while they're there, and they'll see you know, the kind of, like, we have a lot of projects involving 3D printing, for instance, and they can see what students are doing. Uh, we had a project last year where the students had set up a um, cake decorator. They made programmed something to be decorating cakes and then they were providing samples to the kids. <laughs> that was great because their elementary and middle school and high school students have come to these. And there were Needham students there this past one. I think there were little clipboards and they were looking at things and, oh, right, right, and making right. comments and you know, observations. Oh, right. And then they do evaluations. They, they evaluations. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and corporate partner, that's the other part that I think you, you encourage very strongly professionals to mm -hmm. come both to help them critique uh, but also to look for opportunities from companies, uh, you know, whether it's engineering, something completely different, to be able to look, talk to the students and see these are kids that they might hire. So it really, it's a nice continuum all the way up and down. There are a lot of things going on, it seems grades one through 12. Uh, what are some other things, Josh and Alex, maybe begin with you, um, what are some things that you'd like to see if, if uh, you have another year at Needham High School, so you're not going anywhere, but, but uh, as you think about your past, the past 11 years, the past 12 years, what would you like to see at Needham High School? Is a Needham uh, student that would be uh, helpful and exciting? So before I did any like STEM-related activities at home, I, I learned a lot about computers and just how to use them, and uh, specifically PCs and maybe not Macs, Linux also. So I think it might be important to uh, expose students to other uh, softwares out there. And uh, if the school could get some computers, maybe have local companies donate software, I think it would be a good opportunity for Needham High students to uh, get exposed to some new technologies. Also, one thing I love about this room in particular and about the Greater Boston Project is they're both in these huge rooms that are kind of wide open spaces, which I think helps, like, spur curiosity and it's a lot more stress-free than being like hunched over at a desk all day in school. Um, so it gets you moving around using your hands and it's just stress-free that helps with curiosity and reduces, it, it like lessens the stigma that people hate about school and I think like makes it a better learning environment. So. Some, some more flexible, nimble space that allows you to explore, which is certainly what uh, the Da Vinci um, workshop is all about. What, what else should we be uh, thinking about as uh, in, in uh, the Needham schools? You want to see STEAM in grades four and five, so that's, that's the next thing that you'd like to have happen. What, what else do you see as far as our partnership uh, moving forward? What, what are some other things we should be thinking about? So there's kind of a, a, a new development in industry happening right now called the Internet of Things. The idea that products are connected to the Internet and then with that data that they generate, you can do 
things with it. You can have them perform better. You can use it to create new products. So an example is like the Nest system, right, in your home. You can drive home, get on your phone, on your app, tell your thermostat to turn on the temperature. When you get home, it's warm, and that thermostat also is sensing the environment and modifying it. And so right now, it's identified one of the top three disruptive technologies in industry globally, and uh, PTC is a big uh, investor in that area, IoT, and so for kids to start getting involved where they integrate coding, product development, and using data to make decisions, that's a really hot area for industry and education now. So I'd love to work more with Needham in that area of this internet of things, putting some pieces together and creating products that are smart and connected and, and having kids come up with all these creative ideas. We actually just had a, a brainstorming session with uh, about 80 high school students in Marlboro and when they create IoT product ideas and they're working on them right now. So stuff like that's pretty interesting and I know there's a lot of interest in the marketplace for people with those type of skills. Well, as we as we kind of wrap up our conversation here, I, Michael, I'll turn to you. That we, we uh, this business of collaborating with the community, I know, is is quite powerful, and important to you, and I imagine you'd like to see more of it. I'd love to see a lot more of it, and you know, I think we've come a very long way. It it, it serves multiple functions. In addition to bringing some valuable resources into the schools, it gives kids and teachers some hands-on experience, some opportunity to see how work. You know, we talked about silos, but silos weren't invented by K through 12 systems. They're in universities, they're in corporations. In fact, they're kind of harder to break down there than anywhere else. So, you know, this is the way that we can start thinking of this as a continuum because I would like uh, not only the businesses but the individuals in this community to think of the schools. It's not just for these 13, 14 years that kids are here. You know, the schools really provide a function. Uh, you know, there's adult education, there's engagement of adults, there's thinking about what we want out of our citizens going forward. So, you know, these partnerships are what help bring uh, the different parts of the community together to think about it. And I think that's extraordinarily important. The more well, we can I, do, the more better. I agree. And, and what I've heard this, this morning is, you know, three key things that are being repeated. One is authentic learning experiences are quite powerful, and certainly Da Vinci's workshop provides that. Uh, the business of integration, our work, our learning, our lives is important. And finally, making all that happen is collaboration. And all of you uh, working in teams, working with your teachers, working with uh, your neighbors and corporate partners and college students and, and community leaders and, and teachers uh, is really quite powerful and has made some great learning happen and continue to flourish in the Needham schools. So thanks, uh, thanks very much for your work and thanks for joining me today. Thank you.